Hi guys, tonight we're having a super yummy spaghetti and meatballs dinner. It's gonna be low carb though. The spaghetti is actually a spaghetti squash. We're gonna roast that. We're gonna get that in the oven right now, a 425 degree oven. It's gonna take about half an hour or so. Um, I'll show you how to do that. We're going to make some pretty traditional Italian meatballs. We're going to use ground beef, ground pork, and ground veal, and they're gonna be awesome and, and so tender and delicious and yummy, and it's gonna be awesome. You won't even miss the pasta. I do this all the time. When I make my family spaghetti and meatballs, I really just use a, a spaghetti squash for myself. If you want the pasta, if you miss the pasta, of course, use the pasta, um, the spaghetti. Okay, so let's get started on our squash. The squash is super easy. I make these all the time because not only do I use them in place of pasta, but I also have them as a side dish a lot. Um, they're really, really good for you, low calorie, and they're high in fiber and vitamins. They're a squash. So you just wanna break through the hard shell and then inside, kind of looks like a pumpkin, like a tiny pumpkin. There are seeds and we wanna scrape these seeds out. There are lots of different ways to get the seeds out. This way, you should be careful because, and I especially should be careful because I um, cut myself all the time. But what you can do is also take a spoon and just scrape them out. I like to kind of loosen the sides up around the edges with, with a knife. And I'll show you how to do one. Where is my spoon? We'll use this one. All right, we've got almost all the seeds out. Just scrape them just like you would like a pumpkin or a butternut squash. It's a squash, so it's got those seeds inside. And then they come out nice and clean. And I'll show you what it looks like inside. And the seeds look like pumpkin seeds. That's what it looks like. So then when you roast it upside down, I'll put a little olive oil, salt and pepper on it, season it up, and then I'll roast them upside down. And when they come out of the oven, you take a fork and the little strands come off and they look like spaghetti. So you're eating a vegetable, it's great. So I'm gonna get these going. I'll show you how to do this one. I just drizzle it with a tiny little bit. Use my fingers to kind of get it all over. Season it up with some salt and some pepper. Where are you, Pepper Mill? Pepper Mill. And then we just stick it on our cookie sheet upside down, lined with parchment paper so it doesn't stick. And then we're gonna roast them in the oven, 425, about half an hour, just until they're tender and, and the strands are coming out. And I'll show you what that looks like. I'll get those in the oven and then we'll go over to the stove and I'll show you how. Hey guys, so we're over here at the stove and we are going to saute some onions and some garlic with some herbs for our meatballs. Okay, so what we need to do is get our olive oil in our pan. My dad got me these new pans and I love them, love them, love them, love them. I use them all the time. He just got them for me. Oops, that's a little too high because we don't actually want color on our onions and garlic. We just wanna soften them up for our meatballs. Okay, pepper. Salt. Let's get that nice and sauteed. I smell the onion, it smells delicious. Everything delicious starts with onions and garlic. All right, so we got that. We need our garlic, which I need to finish chopping. This is quite a bit of garlic. Um, I know you know that my husband loves garlic, so. I always put a little too much. 
or a little more than maybe somebody else would like. But that's how he likes it. Okay. There we go. Just gonna saute these up just a couple more minutes just to get them nice and soft. And I'll meet you back here in like two minutes. Okay, let's get our herbs in here. So I have some fresh rosemary, oregano, this oregano, mm. my friend dried it herself and gave it to me. I like to crumble it or smush it between my um, fingers to release all those oils. Can you smell that? It smells delicious. Okay, now we have some basil, some dried basil. We're gonna put fresh, ba we're gonna use a lot of fresh basil later. Some thyme. Not too much. Give that a little stir. These are just about done. We just need these to cool. So we can add them to our meatballs. And then I'll show you, um, I'll show you the next steps over here or, or over at the counter, I'm not sure yet. Okay guys, let's get our meatballs going. Over here I have, okay, so our onions and garlic have cooled with our herbs. Now, or actually that was only one onion and that was like four or five cloves of garlic. You can use like three cloves of garlic. Now in here, I have a pound each of veal, ground veal, ground pork and ground beef. We are going to now assemble our meatballs and all of the ingredients. I'm going to put my onions and garlic mixture in here. And let me grab a spoon. Or you know what, I'm gonna grab a spatula to kind of scoop all this out. Maybe you wanna see a little bit better. Okay. So we've got that in there. And now we're going to take two pieces of white bread, cut the crust off, and we're gonna soak them in milk. And the milk and the white bread will make the meatballs. You know how when you buy meatballs pre-made and they're like, they're like super tough and they're like golf balls and they're like balls, like they're just hard. Um, these are going to be nice and soft and tender and delicious and yummy. And they're going to taste homemade. They like, I always feel like homemade meatballs are so much different. Okay, so we've got our white bread in here. We're gonna put some milk in here. We're gonna soak them with some milk. The milk makes the meatballs really yummy. And use your hands. Let me get you in a little closer actually. Okay, use your hands, squish them all together. Squish it all together. All right, let's get those eggs in there. Whisk that up. Get it all nice and cohesive. And let's get that into our beautiful meat mixture over here. These are gonna be tender and yummy and delicious. And now we need to season it up. So the onions and the garlic are already seasoned, we need to season our meat. And we need a good amount of salt. And we have Parmesan cheese going in here, so you don't have to get too crazy with it, but pepper. Lots of black pepper. You can also add um, crushed red pepper flakes, but I like to um, stick with the pepper because there are allergies in my family. Not me, of course, because I love spicy. 
food. So I'm going to grate some cheese and I'll be right back. Okay guys, I have a ton of Parmesan cheese here. That's going in our bowl. I love Parmesan cheese. So, so yummy. Okay, so let me bring you up a little bit. Let's um, get this nice and squished up with our hands. So I'm just going to use my hands to get this all together. And you don't want to over mix it or overwork the meat, but you want to make sure it's mixed. And don't be afraid to use your hands. Okay guys, so we have our meat all mixed over here in this nice bowl. It's all done. So now we are going to um, roll them into balls and then I'm going to put them on this sheet pan, giant sheet pan lined with parchment paper and get them into our 400 degree oven. And um, I'm gonna roll them up into balls and I'll show you, I'll take, I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Okay guys, our beautiful babies are done and I wanted you to see them. This is them. You never have to pan fry meatballs ever again. So these will cook in our oven, our 400 degree oven, and then we'll put them in our delicately in our Dutch oven filled with some fresh tomato sauce. And I'll show you that step. But right now we need to drizzle the top of each one with a little olive oil so they get nice and brown and you know, olive oil is flavorful, beautiful. Now I'll probably cook these and then freeze half, which you can totally do easily, or you can just make these and then freeze them raw too. Just make sure you freeze them separately on a sheet pan and then you can put them together in like a container, um, an airtight container or a plastic bag um, all, all next to each other. All right, so I can actually smell our spaghetti squash. So let's take that out and put these in. And this is done. It gets nice and caramelized around the edges because there are sugar in the squash. And then we'll stick this in. Okay, so let me show you what our spaghetti squash looks like. And I'll bring you down so you can see. All right, so this is what they look like. They're like beautiful and steamy and look at how the edges get super caramelized. And then let me show you how you can take a fork and just peel the strands away. You can't even see that. So you can just peel the strands away and then you're left with these beautiful strands and the whole thing comes apart. And they taste delicious on their own with salt, pepper, and olive oil. But anyway, we'll keep them upside down to stay nice and hot um, until we're ready for them. Okay, let's get our tomato sauce going. I make a lot of different kinds of tomato sauce and it depends on a lot of different things, a lot of different factors as to what which one I'm gonna make that day. Um, it, it depends on what I feel like, what I have on hand, um, am I lazy, what, what, what am I making to go with it. So today I really feel like a nice, fresh tomato sauce that doesn't require a lot of time to cook and it doesn't require a lot of effort. Uh, we're using some really good uh, San Marzano tomatoes and they're whole and we're gonna crush them ourselves by hand. And we're gonna start off with some olive oil, some butter. We're gonna put some whole, a whole stem of basil, like fresh basil right in into the pot with, with the tomatoes. We're going to add some whole fresh garlic cloves and then be done with it. And then we'll plop, plop our meatballs, which are super flavorful into the sauce. And the meatballs will actually flavor the sauce as well. So let's get started. Um, 
Let's see, the only thing I have to do is crush my tomatoes by hand and I need a bowl, so let me get that going. All right, I've got a bowl, but let's get everything going in our Dutch oven. Let's get that started while we crush the tomatoes. In our Dutch oven, we need some butter. Well, let's turn it on first. Let's bring you down here. Okay, we've got it on medium high. We need some olive oil. Let's start with some olive oil first. Yummy olive oil. We need butter. We need just a pat of butter. You could put this in at the end too, which is what I usually do, but the meatballs are going in there. Or you could just leave it up. Um, and then we're going to put in some garlic cloves, three whole garlic cloves just to get those in there. And that's it. You could put in a Parmesan cheese rind if you want, if you have one. I'm not going to today, but I am going to put in a whole sprig of um, a whole little basil plant. Let me get that together. I decided to use this basil because um, my basil plant was not looking super fresh. And I have this in the in the refrigerator anyway, so why not use it? All right. Mmm, smells so good. I'm gonna stick those in when uh, we put the tomatoes in. So, let me show you the tomatoes, the San Marzano tomatoes. I have three cans here, and they actually have basil leaves in them too, but these are um, 28 ounce cans. Everybody's seen tomatoes like this. Nothing new. And we're going to crush them by hand in a large bowl. I love doing this. Be careful because they will splatter if you're not careful. I love doing this. For some reason, I feel like they're more fresh even though they did just come out of a can. <laughs> so I don't, I feel like they've been through less than like the diced tomatoes. I don't know why, but that's how I feel. You can probably hear like my kids upstairs. All right, those are good. The butter is melting. And you can see there's like little basil leaves in here. Sometimes um, I just pop those in my mouth. They taste good. All right. Those are nice and crushed. Meatballs are in the oven. Sauce will be done soon. Spaghetti squash is done. Ready and waiting for us. Let's see how our Dutch oven is doing. It is looking good. Let me get a little spoon or a wooden spatula. It's ready for us. I can smell that garlic. We will fish the garlic out at the very end. Let's dump this in here. And let's get our yummy gar uh, basil. Just the whole thing. I not only like the way it tastes and smells, I like the way it looks in there. You do not have to do that, of course. If you don't have it, just leave it out. This is only going to, to simmer um, until the meatballs are done. Then we'll put the meatballs in, simmer it for another few minutes to get everything kind of married together, and then it's done. It's ready. All right, so when I take when I take the meatballs out, I will bring you back. We forgot two very important ingredients. Pepper. Salt. 
That's a lot of tomatoes and tomatoes can handle their salt. And the butter should balance out the acid. If you need more butter, add, if, it's, if it tastes a little acidic, just add some more um, unsalted butter. But you should be good to go. All right, see you in a few. Okay guys, our meatballs are done. Let's get them out of the oven. They are nice and toasty and brown and yummy. <laughs> All right, so let's get them into our sauce. Let me bring you down to the stove so you can see what's going on. We're gonna put them into the sauce, which is bubbling away. Remember, it's just our fresh tomatoes, our basil, butter and garlic, and olive oil. And we'll just get each one of these into the sauce. And then all they need to do is just hang out in there for maybe another 10 minutes or so. And the meatballs will flavor the sauce. And you just want the, fl the, the flavors to kind of marry together. Everybody has to get to know each other. And these are nice and tender and soft. And then I'll plate it all up with the spaghetti squash and you can see exactly what it looks like and how pretty it is and how low carb it is and how healthy it is. And I'll show you how tender the meatballs are as well. Actually, I'll keep one out right now and I'll show you. Let me get these all in the sauce and I'll bring you right back. Okay, so let me show you this yummy meatball. And then I'll show you, like, look, you barely have to like, it just comes apart. And actually, when you put them in the sauce, you want to be pretty gentle with them and make sure they don't fall apart. Mm. Super hot, but melt in your mouth, fall apart. Remember, they barely have any filler. Just two pieces of white bread and some milk. That's it. And two eggs. They're so, so good. They're like the best meatballs I've ever had. Mm. Mm. Okay guys, our spaghetti squash and our spaghetti are all done. This is our spaghetti squash. And I wanted you to see what it actually looks like. It looks like little strands, like spaghetti strands. So it's perfect for that comforting spaghetti and meatball meal. All right, let me show you our meatballs and these are nice and yummy and they smell good and they're so tender all right so let's plate this all up and our sauce is delicious too i tasted it it's fresh it just it's so yummy sometimes i really like to make sauce like that and it's fast too all right let's get some meatballs and some sauce on here some basil Come here, you meatball. Remember, be very delicate with these meatballs. They don't need to sit and simmer in sauce all day because they are really, there's barely any filler, like I said. They're nice and meaty. All right, and then you have to top your spaghetti and meatballs off with Parmesan cheese. right over the top. It's absolutely necessary. You know, let me get my other grater over here. And that's it. Spaghetti and meatballs. You won't even miss the actual pasta. 